join kids hat family Tofu, I think you should help the poor dog. Why, Tia? Wait, I'll explain this to you through a story. The Lion and the Mouse. One day, a lion was sleeping in his den. A mouse was also playing nearby. Little mouse began running up. and down upon him this soon wakened the lion angry at the little mouse the lion caught the mouse and said you little mouse how dare you wake me i will kill you the mouse was frightened and prayed to the lion father no king please do not kill me i am a little creature please let me go And I will do you a good return one day for sparing my life. The lion was rather amused to hear this, thinking, "What good can he do to me?" But let him go. A few days after, the lion was walking in a jungle. He found himself caught in a hunter's net. He roared and rolled to get out of the net, but he failed. The lion was pleading for help. Help me, help me. The mouse, whose life was saved by the lion, heard the roar and ran to the lion and said, Sorry my friend I will save you The mouse gathered all his friends and told them We all have to help my friend and set him free The mouse and his friends cut through the net and set the lion free The lion escaped and thanked the mouse And from that day they became the best of friends. Like the little mouse and lion had become friends and in the end helped each other, you should help this dog too. Cuz a friend in need is a friend indeed. Lucky cat. If the other boys hadn't come, she would have lost the fight. She should have just run away instead of fighting with such a big dog. She was bound to lose against a dog. I don't think so, Tofu. Dogs are more powerful than cats, Tia. Maybe so. But when you have courage and fight with intelligence, you can win against anyone. The Jungle Book. Once in the heart of a thick jungle lived a little boy called Mowgli. He did not belong to the jungle as he was a human child. Yet he grew up with a family of wolves. His mother, Raksha, cared for him as she cared for her other pups. Careful, Mowgli, or you'll fall off the ridge. No ma, I won't. 
See you later. And so Mowgli took off into the jungle to find his friend and teacher Bagheera. When Mowgli had been a small baby, no more than a year old, he had been found and saved from the forest fire by Bagheera. Of course, nobody knew who Mowgli was, but they always believed he came from the man village at the outskirts of the jungle. Bagheera had handed over Mowgli to the wolves so that he could have a family to grow up with. Since then, Mowgli had learnt the ways of the jungle from his family and his friends Bagheera and Bali. He ran like them, hunted like them, climbed trees like them and also spoke like them. Hello Bagheera, what are you going to teach me today? I won't be teaching you today. Today Balu has something planned for you. Let's go fishing in the river. Hello Balu, let me get a stick to make a spear for fishing. You don't need a spear to fish. But it makes it easier. You can't do it like that Mowgli. That is not our way. Then how is it that I know how to make a spear Balu? Who taught me that? As usual, Bagheera and Balu did not have an answer to Mowgli's questions. The forest fire had started and destroyed the man village. And nobody lived there for a long time. Bagheera had tried many times to find someone to return the child to. But no one was there. When the village settled again, the men put sharp barbed wire fences and laid traps to keep the animals at bay. Although the animals couldn't understand why, all the creatures of the jungle had always maintained a safe distance from the humans. They never meant any harm to them. In any case, the fences and traps made it impossible for Bagheera to return the child back to the human world. Okay, we will do it without a spear. Let's go. The trio set off to the river bank where Balu showed Mowgli how to catch fish without a spear. Balu would swiftly duck his head into the water and come out with fish in his mouth. Mowgli gave it several tries. before he was successful. The day passed in the lesson and they decided to head back to the wolf pack. reached home 
when Bagheera alerted the other two. There was someone in the bushes ahead in the far right. Soon the others could see a pair of fierce eyes with a scar that ran across the left one, emerging from the bushes. Then the whole figure stepped ahead. Run Mowgli, run! Immediately, Balu and Mowgli took off towards home. Leaving Bagheera to fight the large, villainous tiger, Sher Khan. Bagheera and Sher Khan immediately leapt at each other. Sher Khan hadn't expected Bagheera to be so strong and was taken by surprise when he managed to throw Sher Khan against a large tree. The elders of Wolf Pack soon joined them. Sher Khan knew he was injured and outnumbered. You might have saved him today, but the human belongs to me. I will come back for him. Sher Khan, what are you doing here? This is not your territory. No territory can keep me out. And the next time I come, I will not spare anyone who stands in my way. The jungle knew that Sher Khan's threats were not to be taken lightly. And soon, worry spread in the wolf pack regarding Mowgli's stay and the pack's future. I can defend myself. I will not let any harm come to my family and friends. I know a way to put an end to this. Mowgli gathered Bagheera and Balu. I know how I came to the jungle. I have seen Sher Khan's eyes only one time before in my life. He attacked our village when I was small. To scare him, the elders used to fire. But he took me and escaped. And the whole village caught fire. When my father followed him to save me, he killed my father. That is why the villagers have put traps and fences now. Yes, but now we will stop Sher Khan forever. We know where he sleeps in the day, at the foot of the small mountain on the other side of the river. The bulls feed on the grassy slopes of that mountain. If we can scare them to run down the mountain, Sher Khan won't stand a chance. That is a good plan, Mowgli. The trio assured the others that they had found a way out of their troubles. And by tomorrow night, all will be fine. Early next morning, the three set off for the mountain. They went around it and climbed it from the other side so that no one could see them coming. Once on top of it, they could see the bulls eating the grass. Ah! The three leapt at the quiet bulls and rushed towards them, screaming so loudly that the bulls got scared and started running down the hill to escape from them. The plan was working. 
the whole mountainside shook and rumbled under the stamping of the bulls. This woke up Sher Khan. He saw the bulls rushing towards him. There were scores of them. Scared, he started running away from them. He is trying to get away. I won't let him. Mowgli took the tress and swung himself from branches of one tree to another. On the other side, Sher Khan couldn't keep ahead of the bulls. Their sharp horns poked him and he got trampled under their feet. One would have died, but Sher Khan wasn't an ordinary tiger. He was evil and trickery was his second nature. He latched onto the horns of one bull and tugged at him. Agitated, the bull threw him aside and over the side of the plateau. Sher Khan held to the edges of the plateau and started climbing up. He had almost made it when a small tree trunk hit him in the face. He lost his grip and fell to his death. It was Mowgli. He had reached the spot and found a small tree uprooted by the bull stampede. With his quick thinking, he had thrown Sher Khan to his end. He had saved himself and protected the entire jungle from the tyranny of this villain. Bagheera, Balu and Mowgli returned to the wolf pack where everyone rejoiced on hearing what had happened. So you see Tofu, to win you don't always have to be the strongest. If you have courage and think intelligently you can win against anyone. Yes, Tia. Now I understand what you meant. Shall we go down and play with our friends now? Yes. Steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. What happened, Tofu? What is it that you are thinking? Yes, dear. I am not able to understand how can a person win the race if he is slow and yet steady? There is a very famous story behind this. Should I tell you that first? Sure. The Hare and the Tortoise Long ago, in a forest, a small get-together of animals was taking place. You know what? I can beat anyone in this forest. Nobody can beat me in a race. Yes, I have seen him running. I bet he can beat anyone in this forest. Suddenly, from the crowd, they hear somebody laughing.
Why are you laughing? You think you can beat me in a race? I may not disagree with you, O oh Mr. Hare. But I might not deny that I have no fear of competing with you. Oh really? So let's have a race and let's see who wins. So one fine sunny day, all the animals gathered for the race. Everybody was sure that the hare is going to be a clear-cut winner. said the hare proudly. <laughs> now let's go, old man. I'll beat you in a second. The hare runs so fast that all the things on the path go for a spin. On the other hand, the tortoise is running too, but at such a pace that even snails could pass by him easily. Suddenly, the hare stops and looks behind. Oh my lord! That tortoise is gonna take ages to reach this point. So let's just stop here and take some rest. By the time he reaches here, I would get good rest and then cover him up in a blink of a second. In the meanwhile, the tortoise slowly and steadily reaches the point where the hare is fast asleep. He very quietly tiptoes past the hare and the hare is all ignorant of this fact. Suddenly, the hare gets up by the roars of the crowd, cheering up the tortoise. Go tortoise, go! Go tortoise! How is that possible? I kept on sleeping for so long that the tortoise is about to finish the race. He runs and runs and runs. But to his disappointment, the tortoise just manages to finish the race before he could. the story, the hare was so full of himself. He was overconfident that he would surely beat the tortoise in the race. 
because he is faster than that poor being in every other way but but the hare underestimated the tortoise and succumbed in his own fake overconfidence yes and that's why only a person who thinks calmly and is not overconfident of himself wins the race in every sphere of life proud people can't survive for long hmm for your favorite rhymes stories and more join kids hat family subscribe here